Keep me safe, O God, for I have come to you for refuge. I said to the Lord, You are my master. Every good thing I have comes from you. The godly people in the land are my true heroes. I take pleasure in them. Troubles multiply for those who chase after other gods. I will not take part in their sacrifices of blood or even speak the names of their gods. Lord, you alone are my inheritance, my cup of blessing. You guard all that is mine. The land you have given me is a pleasant land. What a wonderful inheritance. I will bless the Lord who guides me even at night. My heart instructs me. I know the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken, for he is right beside me. No wonder my heart is glad, and I rejoice. My body rests in safety. For you will not leave my soul among the dead or allow your Holy One to rot in the grave. You will show me the way of life granting me the joy of your presence and the pleasures of living with you forever. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome here today. I would like to congratulate all of you for remembering that it's daylight savings so that we lost that hour. <laughs> so good job to all of you. And um, for those of you who are online, we just want to welcome you as well. Uh, we just hope that this is just a way that you can experience God in your own space. And, and uh, for everyone that's here, I just pray that this is a real encouragement today. I will open us in prayer. Father God, I just thank you for everything that you're doing in the lives of those that are here. I thank you that you were constantly moving, that you were constantly healing, you were constantly restoring. I just thank you, God, that you are a God of miracles. You are a God that is faithful that knows the beginning from the end. And I thank you, God, that we can stand here today and worship you. I thank you that we have this opportunity, that we have this freedom. And God, I just pray that we are those people that can just reach out to the world to be that shining light and that beacon of hope. And we pray all of this in your name. Amen. So I'll just have you now join us in worship. Standing here in your presence, thinking of the good things you have done, waiting here patiently just to hear your still small voice again, holy, righteous. Faithful to the end, Savior, healer, redeemer, and friend, I will worship you for who you are. I will worship you for who you are. I will worship you for who you are, Jesus.
think it's so amazing how we have this God. <laughs> like we have this Savior who sacrificed everything to bring reconciliation. But I think it's, it's, it's also so amazing that we have this, this spirit inside of us that is crying out for him. is no one who does not have that cry for him. It is in us. Some have been stifled. Some have been muzzled. Some have been told they're not worthy. Some have been told that he doesn't exist. But their spirit still knows him. It is incredible to me that no matter how dark things can get, no matter how empty a person can feel, the Holy Spirit is still right there. <laughs> he is still right there. And he is grasping that spirit inside of you. He is holding it and he is never letting it go. No matter how little it might get, he remains the same. And how easy it is once you give yourself permission to just cry out to him. Once you give yourself permission to let go of the hurt, to let go of the trauma, to let go of the pain, the fear, the anxiety, how easy it is for that spirit to grow. Like how easy it is to swell up inside you. How easy it is to just breathe like that breath of freedom it's a very real thing that restoration that God does inside you where he just builds block after block after block just continuing to to heal the brokenness bit by bit It's like when you when you think of it, like you could be this tiniest little, like the size of an ant, but he will raise you up to be a giant. Just bit by bit. I have to say, <laughs> when we were singing um, in gratitude, where it says, "Come on, my soul," 
don't you get shy on me. Lift up your lift up your song because you have a lion inside of your lungs. I have to say, Sean has a lion inside of those lungs. His spirit is crying out. And that is the thing. God knows his spirit. created them to be and man he finds beauty in that he finds beauty in ashes and it's our response our response is worship our response is praise our response is gratitude response is just he wants us to be close so our response is to be close and I just I want to thank you all for worshiping today I want to thank my team worship I I have the privilege of standing up here and seeing all of you and your responses and your heart cries and it is a beautiful thing it is a beautiful thing to watch and yeah we are privileged and just that that absolute gratefulness that we should all have like it's it's incredible um, we do just have a few announcements today um, off the top of my head there's a good Friday service I know um Good Friday and Easter Sunday are coming up pretty quick. Um, oh, but that's yeah, okay. So next Sunday we actually have a guest speaker, Stephen Caravilla Kar or Caravia. Um, so he's going to be speaking next week. That's going to be exciting. Um, we're also doing a pot like pot pot luck right after that. So please bring a main dish and their dessert or a salad to accompany that. So that will be an amazing time just to spend together. Um, yeah, and then Good Friday is a healing service, uh, September 7th at 10 a.m. And then it's September. Why did I say September? Oh, my goodness. I am on very little sleep right now. Um, April 7th at 10 a.m. I already told them I was fast-forwarding. I thought it was already April. Apparently, now I think it's September. Yeah. Okay. So April 7th at 10 a.m., uh, it's a Good Friday healing service, so please just invite people in your life that you know could just receive a healing. Um, invite friends, invite family. Uh, just come yourselves, and uh, we will have a, a good service that day, and there will be a potluck following that as well. And then Easter Sunday, uh, yeah, pray for who you can invite that day as well. Um, we know a lot of people... They maybe won't go to church, but they will go on Christmas and Easter. So definitely invite them this Easter. We expect really amazing things to be happening. And so, yeah, we thank you for that. We thank you for giving to the church as well. And we will just go into a break time, a quick three-minute break, and then we'll welcome Pastor Trevor. So thank you so much.
Okay. I know it's so counterintuitive. We've been talking about one another for such a long time, and every time I'm breaking up conversations around the uh, food, which is really what one another is all about. <laughs> The early church, they just, they met around the meal. They celebrated the supper around the meal. They, you know, it, it was in the conversations around the meal that the church was made strong and developed. And we got to somehow, I don't know how you do that without, like, basically, we got to have each other in our homes and just have meals together and start talking about Jesus. And Yeah. Anyway, let's, we're going to read from Romans chapter 12 today, and I'm going to read starting at verse 10. I should probably, I'll start from verse 9, but the scripture on the screen is verse 10. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil, cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. Share with God's peoples who, people who are in need and practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Don't be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Don't repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is in the, right in the eyes of everybody. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Don't take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it's written, it's mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you'll be heaping burning coals on his head. Don't do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Can we pray? Heavenly Father, I do want to thank you for what you're doing in us and through us. And Lord, in your church and through your church around the world. Lord, you've been doing it across times, even when we've got it wrong at some times. And you've been faithful to yourself and faithful to your bride. And Lord, you are preparing us to be a church without spot or wrinkle. And I thank you for that. So Holy Spirit, today I do pray that we'd have ears to hear what you're saying and hearts to understand how we can apply it in our lives. In your name we pray. Amen. So we're talking today about verse 10. Be devoted to one another in love. What does being devoted look like? I had to look this one up, okay? Being devoted to something means being focused on that particular thing almost exclusively. When you're devoted to a cause, you work to achieve its goal. When you're devoted to a person, you place their needs above your own. When we're devoted to one another, we are practicing the same love and compassion and generosity that God showed to us, to each other. And we are demonstrating one of the primary messages of the gospel, which is to serve and help each other. Why does devotion to one another matter? Well, the first clue is in the word itself. And I got to just tell you, this is my latest new favorite Greek word ever. It is awesome. The word is philiostorgos. Now, I know, doesn't it that amazing? Do you, do you remember what philiozenon means? Philiozenon. Xenos, we get xenophobia. Can you guess what philiozenos is? It's love for strangers. We use the word hospitality. Awesome word. This one's even cooler. Philiostorgos. A few years ago, when I, I came to understand what agapeo love was. Growing up, I always always understood agapeo love was to be God's love for us, the perfect love, the love that's patient and kind and isn't rude or so, it keeps no record of wrong. That's got to be God's love for us, right? Because how are we ever going to achieve that? Problem with that is I started reading this thing in the Greek and, and the Mosthenes agapeoed the world so much that he left Paul. 
How can that be the love of God and leave the ministry? I don't get that. But a few years ago, when I was really seeking God and really searching what other people were saying, it suddenly dropped in my head. Agapeo isn't just the love of God has for us. Agapeo is love that's a decision. We decide to love. And if we decide to love, we can, we can decide to be patient. We can decide to not keep no record of wrong. It's a decision. Agapeo love is a decision. Phileo love isn't just warm, mushy feeling. It, it, it's the emotional love. Agapeo love, you might not feel like you're loving that person, but you decide and choose to love that person. Phileo love, we feel the love towards that person. There's two other Greek words. Uh, eros is for sexual love. That's not in the New Testament, interestingly enough. It's in the Greek translation of the Old Testament, but not in the New Testament. And storge is the other word for love. And it's very not common. It's, I think I found four places where it is in the New Testament. But storge love is, is really cool love. Storge love is most often described as the love between family members. In essence, it's the love that we get benefit from. Right? Like, that, that's not to be crass, but it's, it's not a, agapeo, we make the decision to love and we might not get anything out of it. Storge, we get something. We got some skin in this game. So the word for devotion in Greek is to have that emotional love, filio, and, and get some benefit from it. Storgos. Filio storge. We get benefits from being devoted to one another. That seems almost crass. Well, that's why it's not too often in the New Testament. <laughs> okay? But Paul in this place, he's saying that we get benefits from being devoted to one another. What benefits are there for being devoted to one another? Well, in Scripture, Luke 6, 38 says, Give and it will be, Jesus said, Give and it will be given to you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. It will be poured into your lap. With the measure you use, it will be measured to you. And Paul says in Galatians 3, 7, A man reaps what he sows. There are benefits as we are loving each other and feeling this love that we have towards each other. And devotion. Now, the fun thing I found this week as I studied was that the, um, there's actually scientific evidence that we get benefits from being devoted to each other, okay? We've got studies. Some are a little weak, I'll give you that, but I'm still quoting them, okay? The first one, uh, being devoted to one another with our, uh, with our finances blesses us. 2008 study done by the UBC and Harvard Business School, examined where a person spent their money uh, and how it affect their happiness. So a total of 630 Americans were interviewed and asked to report on their income, their monthly spending, including all bills, money spent on themselves, their general happiness and gifts given to others or charity. And the results, regardless of a person's income, people who spent more money on charities or others reported higher levels of happiness than those who didn't. Pretty cool. What does it say in Acts 20, verse 35? In everything I did to show you that this kind of hard work, we must help the weak, remembering the words of Jesus himself, who said, it's more blessed to give than to receive. We get benefit from being devoted to one another. We also get the benefit of, of <laughs> number two, being devoted to others helps your health. Crazy study. And this one I have is a little suspect. A study by Doug Oman at the University of California, Berkeley, found that elderly people who volunteered for two or more organizations were 44% less likely to die over a five-year health period than those who didn't volunteer. See, the problem I have with that, if you're healthy and you can, you can volunteer, you're going to live longer than the person who isn't healthy and can't volunteer. So that one's a little suspect. But listen to this. this there's another study. Um, it found that... I don't know when this was done, but it found that people who provided social support 
to others had lower blood pressure than those who didn't. That's, that's amazing. That, that's counterintuitive because when I help people, I, I can feel my blood pressure rise sometimes. I don't know, but it's pretty cool. First uh, Peter 4, 9 says, offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. The third benefit I find about being devoted to one another, it brings others closer uh, and us closer together when we're devoted to each other. According to the book, The How of Happiness, the author says when we serve others, it not only helps us feel closer to others, but helps us feel closer to them. Being kind and generous leads you to perceive others more positively and charitably. And Acts 4.32 uh, says all believers were of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any possession was their own, but they shared everything that they had. So we can do that because God's the giver of all gifts. It's We, we don't we steward what he gives us, and that's our time, and that's our resources. And when we share those that time and resources with others, we can do that because he's already given it to us, right? Um, number four, being devoted to others promotes more gratitude in our lives. Gratitude's a good thing. According to a study by uh, Robert Emmons from the University of California, Davis, and Michael McCullough of the University of Miami, College students who counted their blessings experienced more gratitude in their lives, which in turn caused them to be more optimistic, exercise more, and feel better about their lives overall. Gratitude's a game changer. Since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably. When we, um, when we are devoted to each other, we have more gratitude for what we have, right? I'm going to share a few stories as we go on here. Uh, that prove that to me. Um, and finally, number five, be de being devoted to others helps them to be devoted to us. A study done by James Fowler at the University of San Diego and Nicholas Christakis, Harvard of Harvard, found that when people give to others, it encourages others to do the same and multiplies the effect. So when we're devoted to others, they become devoted to others and ourselves. So, uh, Titus 2, 7a says, in everything set them an example by doing what is good. So we want to be devoted to one another. So the question becomes, how? How do we be devoted to one another? That's a great question. I asked it quite a bit this week. And I got to give you a little bit of secrets on how this book was written. Um, in Greek, uh, well, anyway, in these, these chapters and verses, they were added later. They're not canon. They were added by people to make it easier to find stuff. Um, Greek sentences are different than English sentences. Uh, English sentences, we, we put a period when we have to take a breath, basically is how we do it. So we just stick a period where we need to have a breath. Greek sentences uh, can go on for 200 words. Um, and, and it's just this word is associated to this word, and this goes on. And, it, and, and honestly, I didn't go through all of that for this. I looked it up, and I tried to read it in Greek, and I could actually read this portion in Greek. But my Greek translation had chapters and verses and periods in it, and I didn't like it because it's not original. But anyway, um, as, I, as I thought about it, I, I've always read this portion of Scripture as here's a command, and here's a command, and here's a command, and here's a command. I got a list of things I have to do to check off. And, and I know that's not the way to live the Christian life, right? So just bear with me here. What if Paul is explaining how we're to love each other and be devoted to each other with everything that follows? It's an interesting study. That's where we're going today. The word that will help us remember that is devotion. <laughs> how do we be devoted? It's with devotion. We can, uh, devotion, we don't undervalue honor. We enjoy life with each other. We value the journey. We offer your, our home. 
We take the punch. We identify what each other is going through. We obliterate pride and we nourish peace. It sounds like a good way to be devoted to each other. So let's get started. D, don't undervalue honor. It comes from verse 10. It said, honor one another about ourselves. We show devotion to one another by honoring each other. We honor someone when we affirm them to their face and behind their back. We honor someone when we listen to them. We give uh, each other our time and our attention. We're honoring that other person. We express honor when we give a vital role for each other in our lives. The way that Peterson translates this section of Romans 12, 9, and 10. He says, love from the center of who you are and don't fake it. Run for dear life from evil. Hold to dear life for the good. Be good friends who love deeply and practice playing settle, second fiddle. The question we can ask ourselves is, have I been treating others with honor? The E in devotion reminds us the next verse of uh, verse 11. It says, uh, he is to enjoy life with each other. Paul tells us to never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. We, we serve the Lord when we serve each other. And we show devotion to one another when we serve each other. When we serve another, we're not passive about it. It's an action. Paul tells us in Galatians 5.13, You, my dear brothers and sisters, who are called to be free, don't use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. The question we can ask ourselves is, have I been passionately devoted to others? B, we want to value the journey. Verse 12 tells us to be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. When we're devoted to one another, we help each other face whatever brutal reality we need to face together. Often the best thing we do is simply be present. It, we don't need to have the answers. We, we don't need to help them complain. We just need to be there. This week I had opportunity to go with somebody I would call a friend. We've been together long enough. And he's a gentleman who... Um, trying to decide how much I can share. Uh, he's, he's got a disease that will kill him unless he goes through this stem cell therapy. Basically, what they're going to do is destroy his immune system so they can insert his brother's immune system, and hopefully it works out because if it does, it's a miracle, and he's got a brand new immune system. Uh, there's a 30% chance that it, the complications from that immune system will kill him. Uh, there's about a 100% chance the next few months are going to be really, really terrible for him physically. Um, and this week I got to go with him for another teleconference and I take the notes for him and record it for him and... Um, we spent a lot of time just talking between appointments. And he calls himself not a good Catholic. And when I asked him what that means, he says, I don't even go on Christmas or uh, Easter. But he's open for prayer, and he's open to spiritual things. And um, we were... I don't I can't even remember. He was telling stories, and I was laughing so hard. And we were both laughing. We were just having a good old time waiting for the next appointment. And, and it suddenly hit me that this is holy and sacred. We weren't talking about God. We were talking about life. We weren't coming up with solutions. We were just waiting for the next step. And really, that's what it means for all of us, for one another. The benefit we can bring, we can be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. You see, prayer isn't 
needs to be our driver wheel, not our spare tire, right? It's, prayer needs to be the thing that drives us. And, and to be joyful in hope and faithful in affliction, we need to be faithful in prayer. And as we're faithful in prayer, we can have joy in affliction. Now, joyful in, we can have joyful, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. Well, when we are faithful in prayer. Ephesians 4, 2, 2 says, Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Have I been joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayers? The first O in devotion helps us to remember we need to offer our home. Um, Verse 13 tells us, share with the Lord's people who are in need, practice hospitality. When I say home, I'm not saying we're not. <laughs> if we don't have people over, we're not doing what it is. I'm saying a home is the nearest and the dearest thing, and we don't keep the nearest and dearest from each other. We share what we have and how we have, and we, we, it, it is going to be the nearest and the dearest. And the remi reminder for us is Galatians 6, 9, and 10. It says, don't become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we'll reap a harvest if we don't give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially those who belong to the family of believers. The question we can ask ourselves is, have I been withholding love from others? Uh, but withholding from, uh, from loving others like Christ loved me. Have I been withholding from loving others how Christ loves me? The tea and devotion reminds us to take the punch. Verse 14 says, to bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse. You know, <laughs> when we devote ourselves to one another, are, are, do we expect each other to be the ones who are blessing and cursing us? Um, no, but life happens. And none of us are perfect. And all of us make mistakes. And all of us sin and need to confess and ask for forgiveness. But in this relationship that we're all in, we need to be able just to take it from each other sometimes. Because sometimes people need to vent. Sometimes they need to, sometimes they're not mature enough. Sometimes they need to grow up. But, but that's when we speak the truth in love. We speak Jesus in love so that all of us mature and become more like Jesus. James 1, 19 and 20 says, but my dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak and slow to become anger. Angry, because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God requires. I was having a conversation with another friend this week, and he needed to get everything off his chest, so I just I let him do that. Um, and he uh, how much do I share? He 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 was really. He was offended because he does a lot of work for everybody where he works. And it doesn't seem like anyone notices all the work that he does. And he's feeling unappreciated. And I think he wanted me to go talk to his work meets to tell them to appreciate him, but I can't do that. That's just silly. And so I had to ask him, I said, well, how much are you appreciating them? Well, what do you mean? Do you thank them for the things they do for you? Well, they don't do much for me. Have you noticed the things they do for you? Like the only thing you can control is what you're doing. I can't control the actions of the people around. The only thing you have any control over is your attitude and your actions. So it's all on us. <laughs> Basically, I was telling them, suck it up, buttercup, take the punch. You know, like, you can change the atmosphere of the place around you. You, you want to, like, you reap what you sow. If you want life, speak life. Show life. Anyway, 
question we can ask ourselves, do I bless and not curse others? I is identify what each other are going through. Rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. When we devote ourselves to one another, we adjust our emotions to fit their reality. When we come together Sunday morning, yet we do like to celebrate, and often it's our default, and that's okay, because we need to celebrate what God has been doing. And it's awesome when we see God move during the week, and we bring that together, and then it just goes. But there's times when together we need to mourn. When somebody passes who's significant to all of us, when COVID happened, boy, we were just, it was the lament time for all of us. Monday, Thursday is the only service. If you do a Thursday night service before Good Friday, uh, I, I totally believe that is the one service you should leave depressed from because we're talking about Jesus being betrayed, right? So just leave it there. Sunday's coming, don't worry. It'll be exciting on Sunday, but Thursday, let it be depressing. In order for us to rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn, we need to know what's going on in each other's lives. I had a very weird and interesting week myself. I had, um, I got some results for these marks on my face. Um, they did a biopsy about a month ago and it came back as squamous cell carcinoma, which is not a serious cancer. They can take it out with surgery, but it can get more serious if they don't take it out with surgery. So, okay, that's fine. They wanted to do a couple more biopsies to see how deep it was and how long they were going to have to do the operation. Uh, so they took two more biopsies, and I got the results back this week. It's not a carcinoma. It's just whatever. And I don't know what to do with that. I know people were praying that it would not be a cancer, but that's, I don't know what the next step, they don't know what the next step is. They said, we'll call you in two weeks and tell you what to do. It's like, okay. That was pretty fun. Uh, Friday, I woke up, but I couldn't wake up with the alarm. I just stayed in bed for a while, and I was feeling really weird, and it felt like my heart was doing funky things. So I... I've got an ECG machine that does a six-point ECG. I had a heart attack a few years ago, so I've got all these cool toys. And um, I was taking my ECG, and it was showing a possible AFib, uh, arterial fibrillation. And so I contact the, the admin for my cardiologist, and I con call my doctor's office. The uh, admin was... They don't get emergencies there, so she was really sending emails and texts, and she booked me in places and stuff before. Anyway, long story. Anyway, uh, and we went, uh, and my doctor was doing rounds too, so anyway. Um, I thought, well, probably I should go into the hospital and see. Now, I don't like going into the ER because I have had a heart attack. They take your blood, and then they wait eight hours and take your blood again. And it's just like eight hours of a day. Come on. I got stuff to do. Well, I canceled my stuff. And I went in. Karen dropped me off. And um, my heart was doing some really funky things. It, uh, the heart rate was going really low, really high, really low, really, like it was just jumping, like within seconds. It, you could watch the screen and it was going boop, 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 boop. And they did an ECG, and the guy was like, oh, he printed off one I did last fall. And he said, look at this. This is beautiful. This is all good. And all I see is squiggly lines. I'm like, okay. And this is today's. Look at this. I see squiggly lines. I don't know how to read this thing. And he's like, oh, look at this bottom one. No, you definitely have this happening. And so, okay, fine. So um, when it was all said and done, I still have to talk to my doctor tomorrow, so I don't know where this is going, but they put me back on medication that I was off of for uh, like a, a blood thinner or non-coagulant -co and a um, 
something to make my heart slow down. It's, it's not a beta blocker. He was going to put me on a beta blocker. And I said, I don't want that. It just hurt. I was three years. I could not think. And I don't want that. So he put me on this other one. Um, and everything seems to be going good since then. Like every, I, I haven't had any problems. Uh, I'm going to talk to, if my doctor insists on being on a beta blocker, I'll probably do it, but I don't want to because I got to think. I don't need physical health. I need mental health. Um, so physical health can come too. I'm not saying that, but anyway. Um, Galatians 6, 2 says, carry each other's burdens, and in this way you fulfill the law of Christ. That was my my week. I don't know what your week was like. I know some of you had even tougher weeks or wackier weeks or more interesting weeks. We only find out those things around that table. We only find out those things if we stay afterwards and talk about it. We only find those things out if we come together and we pray and we say, how can I pray for you? And then we can tell our story. That's, that, that's why we need to be devoted to each other. question we can ask is, do I rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn? The second O reminds us to obliterate pride. We need to live in harmony with one another. Don't be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Don't be conceited. When we, excuse me, when we're devoted to one another, there's no room for pride in ourselves. Galatians 3.28 says there is neither Jew or Gentile, neither slave or free, neither male or female, there is, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. The question we need to continually ask ourselves is, do I live in harmony with others? And finally, the end reminds us to nourish peace. Verses 6, 17 and 18, don't repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Um, when we're devoted to one another, we live at peace with one another. We seek peace and we pursue it. We don't let the sun go down on our anger. We are people of peace. And 2 Thessalonians 3.16 says, Now may the God of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way. The Lord be with you all. Do I seek peace and pursue it? We want to take time today as we, I like when we, we, we've been able to do this, is to end the time just in quiet reflection before God. And to, today, I, I, I guess my prayer is that each of us would, would Holy Spirit would give us a memory of a time that somebody showed us that we, they were devoted to us. Because if we've been in the church for any length of time, you, you should know that. And then when you get that memory, the question becomes, God, who do you want me to show that I'm devoted to now? Let's end in prayer and then we'll, we can put on the music now actually. We're so, if anyone comes late, it's over. My goodness. <laughs> Such a quick sermon. Anyway, Heavenly Father, we thank you for everyone who's here and everyone who might be coming next hour or so. Thank you, God, that you are our God. I thank you, Lord, that you have put us together the way that you want us to be put together. I thank you, Lord, that you're bringing the people here that you want to be here. Lord, it's a big risk to share our needs with each other, but I pray if people need to share their needs, they would, they would be confident that this is a safe place to do it. 
So whether that need is physical or financial or relational, I pray, God, for your peace to come in here and to speak to each heart. Lord, you know everything we're going through. You know our hearts. You know our pains. And you are that friend that sticks closer than a brother. But Lord, you put us in relationships so that we could be you with flesh on to each other. So I pray that even at this time, compassion would rise up in us for devotion to flow through us.